Welcome to Storytime! I'm Lo Ping and I'm an author. Have you heard of the Chinese classic Journey to the West and the Monkey King Sun Wukong? In this famous book, the monk Tripitaka goes on a journey to the western paradise to receive a set of scriptures from Buddha. Along the way, he is accompanied by three disciples and a horse, all with magic powers. They have to face lots of dangers fighting monsters and all that in order to get to the western paradise, so you can be sure the story is filled with fun and adventures. Now, the original Journey to the West was written 500 years ago by a man named Wu Cheng En. But that book is way too difficult for children to read. So, I rewrote the story so that even children can enjoy this wonderful classic. Here are my Journey to the West books published by World Scientific Singapore. There are three books in the series. The first is Chaos in Heaven, the second is Perils on Earth, and the third and last book is Enlightenment. They are beautifully illustrated by Charlotte Ng and Ku Jia Yi. Today, I'll be reading from the first book, Chaos in Heaven. Chapter 1. A Rock Gives Birth Once upon a time, in the eastern country of Aolai, a rock got pregnant and gave birth to an egg. Out of that egg popped a monkey. As you're reading this, you're probably wondering how a rock could get pregnant and how monkeys could come from eggs. Well, this book is filled with crazy stuff, so get ready for a wild ride. Hundreds of monkeys crowded around the newcomer. Welcome to the flowery fruity fountain, and we mean mountain, they cried. And that was how the magical monkey began life with his new friends on the mountain. One day, as they were splashing about near a waterfall, the monkeys wondered. What is behind the waterfall? If anyone is brave enough to find out, we will name him king. I'll do it, the magical monkey shouted. With one leap, he bounded through the waterfall. Gasp! What a large cavern he was in! It could surely fit a thousand monkeys and more. There were even tables and chairs, beds and shelves, all made of stone. A sign indicated that the name of the cavern was Cave of the Water Curtain. The magical monkey returned to his companions. Beyond the waterfall is a home made just for us. Follow me! Chattering excitedly, the monkeys clambered through the curtain of water. Wow, we! What a ruckus they made! The magical monkey felt that some law and order was necessary. Quiet! he shouted. Didn't you say that anyone who dares to venture behind the waterfall will be your king? King! King! the monkeys sang out. What fave, we mean name, shall our king have? The magical monkey struggled hard to think of an impressive name. Handsome monkey king, he said at last, scratching his head. Very creative, the other monkeys murmured respectfully. The monkey king and his subjects lived happily on their mountain for a good number of years. Then, one day, the king flopped down on the ground. Where, where, where? he sobbed. What's the matter? his subjects asked worriedly. The monkey king wailed. It just occurred to me that when I grow old, I will die. To comfort him, a senior monkey sang. Across the distant oceans, no idea where exactly. I've heard a wise man lives. His name is Master Putty. Don't scold me if I'm wrong. Don't kill me if you die, but if you make the journey, you might just meet that guy. Why would I want to meet him? The monkey king asked. He knows the secret to brevity, uh, I mean longevity, the old monkey said. Yippee! I will go there and be his disciple, the monkey king declared, cheering up immediately. There was great fanfare as the monkeys prepared a fruity feast before sending their king off on his quest. After a long, difficult journey, 
the Monkey King found the cave where the wise teacher lived. He recognized Master Putti immediately from his long white beard, because, as everyone knows, all wise old men have long white beards. Please accept me as your disciple, the Monkey King said, bowing to show his sincerity. Where are you from? Master Putti asked. I came from the country of Aolai. Zoinks! Putti exclaimed in disbelief. Aolai is so far away. How is it possible you have come from there? I rode a raft over an ocean, wandered about on land for some time, crossed another ocean, and here I am, after more than ten whole years. Putti nodded. I suppose it doesn't sound so difficult after all. Now that you've explained it step by step, what is your name? I am the handsome Monkey King, the Monkey King said as he struck a pose. Yikes, Putti said in dismay. That won't do. From now on, you'll be called Sun Wukong, which means monkey who is aware of emptiness. Best name ever, Wukong said, delighted. He joined Putti's other students and worked hard at his studies. However, after several years, he grew impatient. Master, he interrupted Putti in the middle of a lesson. When will you teach me the secret to long life? You impudent monkey, Putti cried, leaping up with great agility. He wrapped Wukong's head with a ruler three times and then exited the classroom with his hands folded behind his back. Wukong's classmates laughed at him, but our dear monkey was not bothered at all. Three raps meant the third watch of the night, about 11pm to 1am. Hands folded behind meant the back door. Master Putti is telling me to visit him tonight during the third watch via the back door, he said to himself, rubbing his hands in glee. Now, you may think Wukong had gone mad, but lo and behold, when Wukong visited Putti that night, the old man was overjoyed. You alone have figured out my secret signs, he exclaimed. For that, I will tell you the secret to longevity. What do you think will happen next? Well, you have to read the rest of the book to find out. Don't forget these two books too. Thanks for watching. Do catch the other story time videos. Goodbye!